Folks, one of my favorite Gospels is the Gospel of John because it reveals the love of God. And one of my favorite stories in there comes from John chapter 8. Uh, I, I believe it's the richest and most pure expression of uh, the love of God. And it is about a woman caught in the act of adultery. Um, in the tragedy of this story, they dragged her in the morning. They, they obviously were waiting for her to get caught. They drag her into the temp temple courts early in the morning. Now you think about uh, what this must feel like being drugged in front of the church and exposed. And, you know, and then you also have to trace in the story that, that um, they only took her and not him. Uh, they drag him in front of Jesus and they try to trap him. And so uh, they want to nullify his message of forgiveness. So they dragged this woman into the temple courts in front of the church. And they said, well, the, the law of Moses says uh, such a woman should be stoned. And they use this to trap her or to trap him. I'm sorry. They use this to trap him. And he says, so what, you know, they knew if he said, don't stone her, we should forgive her. Then they said, well, then you break the scriptures. And, uh, but if he said stoner, it completely nullifies entire message of forgiveness. This is what God does when religion tries to deceive people. God himself in human form bent down and he wrote in the dirt. One of the great mysteries of this story is we don't know what he wrote. But every one of us probably have things that we've done that we're ashamed of. And we deserve to be stoned. But we've received the judgment of religion and people that would say, you've done something so bad that um, you're not worth anything anymore. In fact, we just ghost you. We cut you off. We reject you. You know, you don't have to be physically stoned to feel like you've been stoned. The greatness of this mystery in this story is we don't know what he wrote. But when he, he, he got in the dirt for her. Now, folks, what you got to know about the love of God is he'll always get in the dirt for you. Because the worst thing that ever happens to him is he would lose you. This is what a real man looks like when he goes to save his bride. He'll get in the dirt for her. Then he simply said, whichever one of you is without sin, go ahead and kill her. Throw the stone. Crush her head. Bust open her skull. If you have no sin. And in the mystery, he gets in the dirt again and he writes something that made the older ones drop their stones because he crushed their self-righteousness. And then the younger ones who are always getting their start in ministry. And, and they realize, oh my gosh, we too are sexually immoral. We too are full of hatred and selfishness and pride. And they drop their stones. This is what women look like when they get raised up. And he pulled her up and he looked her in the eyes. And with great love, he said, now, who condemns you? So he goes, no one. No one, sir. And he said, I want to protect you here. He said, now, don't sin because they will kill you. Only I can save you. But understand on this earth, there is consequence to sin. Here was a woman that had been so destroyed because she'd never been loved. 
I'm sure many of you have felt like you have never been loved. Maybe you've been abused. Maybe you've been rejected. Maybe you've sold your soul. Maybe you've cheated on your spouse. Maybe you're lost and don't know where to turn. You have to understand who Jesus is. He's the God who will always get in the dirt for you which is why he gave his life to save us. And so for the joy, he went to the cross. The whole time, he was bleeding, ripped apart. He was thinking about her. That's why the gospel's marriage proposal. He wants you. You can trust him. He loves you like no one else. And if you'll come to him and say, I do, I believe Jesus is the Christ, the son of the living God, that he so loved me that he died for me. And so I confess, I do. I take you. I take you as the groom, and I am your bride, and we are the church. Folks, it's one of the most beautiful expressions of the gospel you will ever hear in story form. Her story is our story. Well, Father, I pray that your spirit touches your people. And they will always know your blood covered their adulteries and our greed and our sin and our shame so that we could always know we're loved in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you.